can't discuss animation without giving due respect to Edward Muybridge and his racehorse experiment. In the late 1800s, there was a hot debate. People wanted to know if all four of a racehorse legs ever left the ground all at the same time. If you look at early paintings of horses racing like this one, you'll see that all the legs are extended when they're off the ground. A single photograph taken by Edward Muybridge like this one proved them all wrong. The only time a horse's legs were off the ground was when the front legs were back and the rear legs were forward, exactly the opposite of how paintings had been done up until this time. Moybridge then went on to create animations by placing a series of cameras side by side, and as the horse went by the camera, it tripped a string attached to the shutter of the camera, producing a sequence of images like this. Later, a timer was added, and the motion picture industry was born. Creating an animation like this on the Seymour Micro is easy. A tag, like this animation index tag right here, is used as an index into a table of images. As the PLC increments this tag, the image on the screen changes. I've set up F1 on this Seymour Micro to increment that tag since we don't actually have a PLC connected. So each time I press this, we get a new frame and we see the horse moving. F2 resets that index, and if I just hold down F1, it looks like the horse is running. So normally you would program the PLC to increment this from 0 to 14 and then wrap back around to 0 and repeat. I simulate that by pressing F2, hitting F1 to increment, and then F2 to wrap it back around. Let's see how to set that up. This banner up here is just a static text object. That's easy. Down here, we dropped a multi-state bitmap object. If I look at my objects, come down to bitmaps. I see this multi-state bitmap object. I simply drop that onto the screen, this guy right here, and filled it in with the appropriate data. The first thing you want to do when creating a little animation is make sure you increment this by the image number. If you use it by bit number, then the Seymour will be expecting a bit to be shifted along a word. We're going to use the actual image number for our index. We also have to decide what we want to do if we get an error. Suppose you're missing an image or the index gets too big. We could display an error message, we could display a blank image, or we could just display the previous image, which is what we've selected here. We're going to use this animation index tag to be our index into our table. On the next tab, the image tab, you simply load your images. So each of the individual images, which we can scroll through here and get a little preview in the upper left corner, note that it also shows your preview on the screen. are all lined up in a row in this table. These arrows right here move the images. Be careful, they don't sequence through them. If I want to move image one down to slot four, then I would simply bump it down like this. Now I don't want to do that here, it needs to be back up here. You can also use this to move the images around. For this particular project, we want to lock the aspect ratio and, and stretch it to fit so they all have a uniform size. Uh, we don't really need the transparency here, so we can turn that off on all these images if we want to. Note that you have to do that on an image by image basis. Since we don't have anything behind there, we don't need to worry about it. Finally, we need a way to test this without having a PLC connected, so I dropped an increment decrement object right here, selected just the increment mode. I said I want to increment, not decrement. I'm limiting the range from 0 to 14 because I have 15 images and I want to increment this animation index each time this button is pressed. In addition, I want to push button to reset that, so I'm going to use a recipe button, and that recipe is going to have only one entry. It's going to take this animation index and set it to a zero each time someone presses that button. So now I can increment the index, and I can reset the index. That's really all there is to it. Now we just pop over to our simulator, and try it out. So F1 should increment my index. When I get to 14, it stops. So I reset it with F2 and do it again. The same concept can be used on the black and white panels. I just reduced all those images to black and white copies. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Well, that's it for creating a racehorse animation on the Seymour Micro. Be sure to check out the other how to animate examples in this video series. And as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered or any other comments for that matter, we appreciate the feedback.